What's up guys? It is uh, Sunday um, and uh, I'm back obviously. Well, I've been back for a couple days now, uh, but um, already behind like always. Uh, this weekend uh, we went to the junkyard. Uh, we didn't record any of it because um, we were kind of in a hurry. Uh, we were a couple towns over and I had to be back in town so uh, we were just trying to knock it out. But um, we got this fine specimen right here. So this guy is a K24A2. Um, it came out of an 04 TSX. It was wrecked on the front. Uh, it seems like it's in really good shape and it was well taken care of. It had a new uh, power steering pump and a new alternator and a new starter. I mean, all kinds of brand new stuff on it. So I'm hoping it was well taken care of. Uh, we couldn't start the car or turn the key on to see how many miles it had on it, but the last oil change sticker said 160, 160 or 170,000 miles. Um, so it's got about as many miles as my RSX has on it. Um, so this is going to be, uh, uh, I'm thinking a good little motor for us. It's, um, it's going to wind up going in Dallas's car. Um, he's looking at getting some parts and stuff right now to get it put in there. Um, so that's going to be coming along. We'll have that. And then, uh, I've got a five speed, uh, base RSX transmission over there that, uh, I think we're going to use. Um, so it, it should turn out pretty, pretty good. Uh, hopefully I think he's shooting for five, 600 horsepower somewhere in there. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so I also yesterday, I didn't record too much of it. I will, uh, I might stick some clips in there cause I did record a little bit, but not too much. I got, um, I got the air compressor all done. It's behind that door. And yes, I know about the heat and it needs air to breathe. Um, when I, the only time I'll ever plan on using the air compressor really is when I'm doing plasma cutting. So I'll open the door up when I'm using it, but uh, I needed a place to mount those regulators or the regulator and the filters and stuff like that. So, so I went ahead and pulled a uh, power circuit to the air compressor and um, got it up and going. I still need to break it in. I've kicked it on a couple times, but I still need to break it in. Uh, but the reason I did that was so uh, I'll be ready for the plasma table. Um, and of course, speaking of the plasma table, there it is. So here's the plasma table. Um, there's the water pan for it. And then um, this is uh, it in all of its glory. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty small box, but it is fucking heavy. Uh, it's made by this company called Langmere Systems. Uh, I don't know if it'll focus. Um, it is a crossfire table. Um, and uh, the reason these are what they are is uh, they're, the reason these are so affordable is because it only cuts on a, a X, Y plane. Um, it doesn't control torch height up and down. Um, that's the downfall to it. but there's no way I could afford a system that controls torch height. Um, you're talking about like triple the price, if not more for just an entry level one times this, you know what I'm saying? So they're really, really expensive. And this guy should do everything I, I need, especially with the water pan. I shouldn't have to worry about any problems with torch height. So I think it's going to work out really good for me. Um, I'm never going to be cutting anything much higher than or much thicker than an eighth of an inch plate. I don't think I really need to worry about the metal warping um, and causing problems where I would need uh, uh, torch height control, but we'll see. You never know. Um, I know there's going to be a learning curve to using this thing, uh, especially with the software. I've gotten myself pretty acquainted with um, Fusion 360, but I still haven't fucked with the cam software, you know, to program the tool paths and stuff like that. So I've got a little bit of learning to do there, but as much as I don't want to, because I don't have anywhere to put the fucking thing, I'm going to go ahead and put it together. Um, and then get a better idea how big it is. It's relatively small. Uh, I think it only cuts two by two. Um, but I think it's probably going to wind up taking about three, four foot square of space up in here. So I need to go ahead and get it together and figure out where the, what the fuck I'm going to do with it. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put it together and uh, check it out and check out the new plasma cutter. I sold my old plasma cutter. I had one of the little Amazon um, Lotus LTP 5000Ds 
had really good reviews and it worked fine for what I was trying to do with it, but uh, it was a high frequency machine and you can't use high frequency with this table. It'll fry the electronics on it. So I picked up an Everlast um, Cut 50, if I remember right, uh, Power Plasma Cut 50. And uh, that's what we're gonna be using with it. So, which is why, again, why I had to set up there. Um, but let's uh, dive in and, um, and and get cruising on putting it together and we'll see how it works. And I doubt we'll be able to cut anything today, but but we can at least uh, maybe break it in if I can figure out the programming. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. Uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot to it, uh, but they they know how to pack some shit into a box. I know that. Um, this is all the stuff to build the table out of, um, and those are the lead screws and stuff over there and the torch holder. Um, there's the stepper motors. Uh, that's the electronics for it. This is all the hardware, and then this is the optional water table um, that all the slats will go on that it cuts on. The water table will keep the material cooler and avoid warpage. Um, so that's the whole point with it. But so far, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, I was afraid these were gonna be janky, but they're they're not. They're nice, thick material. Um, they're heavy, it seems like they're heavy duty for what they are, so um, I'm pretty pumped about it. Overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. I was Like I said, I was afraid it was gonna be kind of janky. Um, but it, it seems like it's it's going to be a nice solid uh, a nice solid tool. Um, I knew from the get go this wasn't going to be something that I could just pull out of the box and start cutting with. Even once it's assembled, there's still going to be uh, tons of learning curves and just trial and error to get everything set up right and figure out the curve width for my plasma cutter for certain materials and and you know feed speeds and stuff like that. But the, you know there's there's a science to it and. Um, People do it every day, so it's just another thing I'm gonna have to learn. But I'm pumped, so I'm gonna start throwing it together, and then um, hopefully we can get it all set up. And maybe if I can figure out the, if I can get everything installed on the computer, on well on my laptop, then we can bring it out here and, and do the break in and actually see it moving shit. So uh, I'm gonna get started. <laughs> Okay, so what was probably, I don't know, a minute for y'all was fucking six hours for me. I severely underestimated what it would take to put this thing together. Um, but it's together, finally. Uh, I still have to set up the plasma cutter and stuff, but um, this is it in all of its glory. Um, Obviously, this is the uh, the y-axis. This is the x-axis, and then this is the torch holder, and that you know moves around and does all the cutting. Um, it runs on these little lead screws, and there's the motors for them, little stepper motors. There's a motor back there, um, and uh, this was the optional little water table. Um, so this will get filled with water, and what I think I'm going to do um, since I'm going to since I'm gonna be wheeling it around so much, 
Um, I think I'm gonna try to build a shelf down here underneath it with a tank on it and then um, plumb the tank up to here, up to this drain plug and then figure out a way to uh, pump the water up into it and then drain the water back out when I'm not using it. And it'll, it'll save me from having to uh, constantly, I, I know the water gets nasty because it traps all the vapor and the dust from the, from the cutting process, but in a garage, it's gonna wind up just getting a ton of pollen and shit in it and nasty, just, you know, normal shit. So I'd like to be able to, you know, pump it down into a tank and leave it there until I need it and then be able to pump it back up in here when when uh, when I need it so uh, That's that's it uh, And there's a little control box for it with the uh, with all the cables for the computer So now that we've got to put together we got to put together the uh, or get the plasma cutter all set up I was gonna buy the plasma cutter that the uh, the CNC table manufacturer recommended it was like a razor razor cut 45 or something they had like a 30 and a 45 and uh i was gonna get the 45 is is a pretty good deal they catch you a better deal on it than you can get anywhere else but they didn't have stock on the 45 and they said it was going to be months before they got any more in and i've seen a, a bunch of problems with them um so i wound up going with what i know um and i bought an everlast unit which has really really good reviews online um and after dealing with my everlast tig welder um it's kind of seemed like the right choice. It's not a hypertherm, but I, I don't have, I can't afford hypertherm right now. So um, those fuckers are expensive, <laughs> are very expensive. Um, but this is it right here. Um, it is an Everlast Power Plasma 50S. Um, I went with the 50 over the 30 because of aluminum. Um, I, know, I doubt I'll ever need 50 amps for steel because I'm not, never gonna be cutting anything that thick. But um, I think I will need it if I get into doing any thicker aluminum stuff. Um, it came with a torch, which these torches have really good reviews online too. Um, and then I bought an optional CNC torch for it that I'm going to set up on the uh, table that I won't ever have to take off. Um, and that way, if I ever need to use a plasma cutter to cut something, I can just unhook the torch and be good to go. So... I'm gonna get this puppy all set up and then um, and then we'll go from there with it. Alrighty, so I got everything put together and I got all the drivers and everything installed. Um, it was actually really, really easy to install the drivers. I don't know what I was worried about. Um, I just followed their little video. Um, but it, I mean, it, it, as soon as I loaded up the program, it kicked on, ran, um, but it didn't kick on run. It allowed me to jog it. Um, but I loaded the first program into it, which is like the break-in program. It just runs it back and forth. Um, and I have not started it yet, but that's this where I'm at with it right now. So I got, I jogged the torch back here to the back corner. Um, and I set that as, I zeroed everything out from that point. Um, it's, you know, right there and right there. I mean, it's pretty much all the way over it can go. You don't really want to bump these stops. Um, because it can fuck up the stepper motors, but it's, you know, within a quarter of an inch there and a quarter of an inch there. Um, and then I came over here on the software and I zeroed out the X and the Y axis. Um, so that puts me right here on the table where I should be. Um, and now these crosshairs, that red line is going to be the path that the torch is going to move in and it'll just move back and forth in that path. But those crosshairs should follow it. Um, uh, it's do or die time, I feel like, so, <laughs> um, we're gonna go and, and start it up and see what it does, so, wish, wish me luck. That fucker's working. 
So here it is moving along its you know tool path there, uh, which you see like I said in the red line. So my computer's a little bit laggy. This thing's fucking ancient, but uh, it is doing its thing. <laughs> it's too fucking neat. That is too fucking neat. You know. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to cut anything with it this weekend. Um, I still have to write all the programs in Fusion 360 to be able to cut out what I need to cut out. Um, but I needed to go ahead and get it together and get it up and get it working that way. Um, <clears throat> I can use it to make the brackets for the rear subframe or all the little brackets I'm gonna need for it. And um, to make the stuff that I'm gonna need to build the uh, belt grinder and stuff. So. It was kind of important to go ahead and get it up and going now, even though there's nowhere in the garage to put it. You see where it's packed in right now. Uh, I hope the RSX, I hope the RSX still fits in here. <clears throat> we'll see. But um, uh, like I'm sorry for the the lack of car content here lately. It's just going on vacation and coming back. It's been kind of hectic. But now that I have this thing, you know, rip, ripping and ready to roar. I can uh, go ahead and, and write the programs for all the little brackets I'm gonna need for the subframe uh, after work uh, throughout the week and we can cut them out next weekend and, and try to start cruising on it, hopefully. Um, we also, Nug is waiting on his block to get done at the machine shop, so as soon as it gets done, uh, we'll be able to do a video on putting it together. Uh, and then, as always, you know, Dallas is gonna put that K24 in his car, so I know he's wanting to get it done too, so. There, there will be plenty of car content to come. <laughs> um, uh, thanks to everybody that's bought shirts and stickers and stuff. I know uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Tom here in town bought some, and then uh, Nelson bought a shirt. Um, there's, there was a couple other guys. Sorry if I, for, if I missed your names, um, but I appreciate it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And uh, if anybody wants to support the channel, you can pick out, pick up one of these shirts or some stickers. Speaking of stickers, I got um, some more stickers in. Um, these guys are about four times the size of the other ones. So if you order stickers now, this is what you'll be getting. Um, but they're just to give you an idea. They're they're a lot bigger than uh, those were the original ones. So if you want to support the channel, uh, the website's www.megaspool.myshopify.com. The link will be in the description, along with uh, Nug's Instagram and my Instagram. If you want to get a hold of me and talk about something and tell me how good or bad a job I'm doing, uh, Instagram is normally the easiest way, or if you just comment, I, I read and answer every one of the comments. So, um, But that is it for this week, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me uh, for another short weekend. Um, and I will catch y'all next weekend.